before you actually engage in the church practice, then individual have to have the capacity, or you can say the aspect we call the prerequisite aspect or the quality that are required by the individual who intend to become a chiba. Now, what are these qualities that we what we have to have before we engage? Now, these are the first. Now, they are like sevenfold qualities. It says the first one is very basic is we have to know, recognize, and understand the pain and suffering of the cyclic continuum of existence. That's very important. Now the second thing is we, we as a individual we have to know and recognize the impermanent nature of all beings. Not only recognizing but remembering them and embracing them from the bottom of our heart. The third is we have to know and recognize and realize the law of cause and effect. Now these three things is our, our knowledge with respect to the, the world. And then we as an individual, now what do we have to generate? A quality aspect we need in us. The first thing is we have to have a faith. And a stable, stable faith. And then we have to have a, uh, what do you say, uh, a, we say bodhicitta or the mind of awakening. That is not just practicing for ourselves but to benefiting all beings. The third thing is our body, mind and the heart are filled with the loving kindness and the compassion. And the finally, the seventh one is now we as an individual who intend to become a chirpa, the most important thing is realizing the selflessness of all beings. So now these seven things are very important before we have to establish. We have to develop those things and generate those understanding and after that we can practice it. Now, chud uh, is a Tibetan word, and the meaning of the chud, if we translate it, it comes uh, like a to cut or the cutting. Now, if we say it is cutting, then it in com uh, two things come into my, my, my mind. That is, for to cutting, then there is uh, there has to be subject and object, and the subject who does the cutting and the object who is being cut. Uh, so now what do we cut? As for now first say it's an object. You say now there is a three things we cut in the church practices. Now internal, external and the secret with respect to the three points. Now internal we cut four maras or the demons. Or we can say in the internal, we cut the three poisons or the five poisons that afflict the individual and that actually keep us in the cyclic continuum of the sufferings. So if we cut the five poisons or the four demons from the bottoms of its existence, then we ultimately get into the, the state of Buddhahood. The internal. Now we say the external. What do we cut? The external we cut the, we say a demons, or the spirits, that the harm other beings. But then also now, so when we say the demons, uh, the external, and then this uh, then there are two two form of that, two two kinds of external demons or the spirits that talk talk me. And that's a, one is with the forms, one is without the form. The form, for example, it can be anything like a, a anything that can can be a threat to the individual who can eat us, who can harm us, like who can burn us, who can carry us water, fire, air. They have a, like, or we can say the any animals or the you know. So like uh, yeah, the tigers or lions, you know. So that's kind of 
uh, who can, like enemies, or the thief, or the robber, and they can cause the harm. So for that, what can we do? Then we, from there, for that, we have to escape, or we have to um, be cautious. Now there are also, then there is a formless demons. Now these formless demons are actually, we say it is the creations based on our internal conditioning. Any thought and feeling that are generated based on the five poisons. And for that, uh, we cut that one too. And then the secret one uh, is we cut a ego grasping to the soul. And then now these are on the object side. These are need to be cut. Then to be to cut, then there has to be subject. Right? And what are the qualities? What are the realizations? The aspect of the uh, the subject or the chirpa we say right? Who cuts the these three uh, forms of uh, demons. But then, well, it is not we cut through the knife or the big uh, sword or something like that. But these are all cut through the, uh, the positive intentional in the cutting, uh, the mental cutting. Mm -hmm. So then, how do we cut? First, as a chirpa, we have to establish uh, into the non-dual state that is called natural state or the primordial pure state okay. after establishing oneself in that non-dual state or the primordial the pure or natural state then we cut it now for the cut what kind of weapon we use after being established in that non-dual state, that weapon being used is Tongyut of the wisdom that recognizes the empty nature of all being. Now, if if the very you know, for example, now, if I have a ability to abide in that state of wisdom, that understand the lack of inherent existence of all things and all being and maintain that understanding spontaneously then I don't need to have to cut anything everything cut by itself for example on the tip of a limb darkness cannot abide because the lamb dispelled the darkness. So the lamb does not have to do to clear the darkness, but it just has to be there. So if we, as the chirpa, able to abide in a non-dual state, or, or the cognitive ability of uh, emptiness, then everything will, uh, how do you say, dissolve, but by itself. So that is the the essence of the church practice is uh, developing mm -hmm. the way to find a natural state or the nature of our mind and ability to abide mm -hmm. in that state. And then how do we actualize that state is by engaging in the threefold generosity the generosity of material gift that is giving the physical body and the uh, gift of giving dharma that's uh, the teachings uh, that you know it to the all the spirit or to our soul it is always for the good heart establish yourself into the uh, the bodhicitta mind of awakening and then helping other beings not to harm each other right what is the truth follow the path be good be kind. Do not engage in the unwholesome action of body, speech, and mind. And don't force the other people to engage in unwholesome actions of uh, body and speech and mind. And also not encouraging to yourself and to other to 
engage in unwholesome action of body, speech, and mind. So these are the giving a bone that is giving the truth. Then it and the, the third part is it emphasis is on the giving protections, giving protection that is not engaging any actions of body, speech, and mind that frighten other people, that threat other people. That is to overcome the fear. Mm -hmm. So in this practice, in this particular laughter of the Dakini, then it's in the giving and the gift of protection, that what is do is we offer, I give or you give as a chopa to the other beings, to whatever they desire, whatever they need. After giving that now, you have received what you desire. Now please do not harm other people. Don't become the object of somebody else's fear. So that is, and then finally we have a, how do you say, a dedication. Of course, the practice, we dedicate the merits of our practice to all beings. <laughs>